Layout and Navigation. We are about to focus on the sound editor. The layout is similar to the kit editor. Here is a short overview. On the left side we have the audio file browser. There we aren't actually on the Drummond 5 drive, but can gain easily access to all OS X or Windows files and folders. I have prepared a couple of folders with drum samples in WAV format. They are located on my desktop. In the upper right side we have the monitor section, in which you can check the sound level and adjust the listening volume. Underneath that are certain properties. In the drum drop-down menu we can select certain drum types that we want to create. The following are the selections that you can choose from. Drum, percussion or loop, snare or tom, cymbal and hi-hats. Among them you can find the max tune regulator. With it you can enhance and adjust the sound's tune within the kit. The max tune rate influences the sound resolution. The lower you set your max tune adjustment, the better your sound resolution. A value of plus 4 is great as a basic. Creating your own Ds and D files. The drum type options have different configurations. Drums, percussion or loop. With drum, percussion and loop you can choose just one zone. With it we can create a kick drum, a percussion sound or a loop. The latter is only possible if you choose an individual sound file and drag it into the head area. After completing this action you will see a pop-up in the bottom right corner. Here you will have to check the box in order to make the sound play as a loop. On the prerequisites is that the loop was cut properly. For a kick or a percussion sound I recommend that we use more than one sample, because it would sound unnatural in a dynamic environment if you would only use one sample. A drum that is being played gently therefore doesn't only has less volume, but also sounds more like the transients and harmonic spectrum is being restrained. Here I have 15 kick samples which were recorded in different velocity levels. It is important that these samples are not normalized, since they are distributed dynamically when you drop them in the head area, according to their original volume. By simply clicking or using the arrow keys up and down, we can preview each layer. When previewing individual layers, we hear clearly that the individual samples differ in volume, timbre and articulation. This is the secret of a natural overall sound. With the Remove button, layers can be deleted. For snare and tom, there are two zones with head and rim. These zones can be filled with different sounds. Both zones are stored together in the same D and D file. In symbol, we have a cup, bow, and edge, which are three zones that can be assigned with different samples. Depending on where one strikes the symbol, other samples are triggered. This allows for a very natural and authentic sound. Again, all three sounds are stored together in one DSD file. In the hi hat, it behaves somewhat different. If we select this option, a pop up window opens, in which we can adjust the number of edge, bow, and pedal types. These types represent the different opening degrees of the hi hat. Therefore, if you have the appropriate sample, one can build a very realistic playable hi hat. For the sake of simplicity, we take each two bow and edge types and one pedal type. Now we can choose between the bow and edge position and if it's open or closed, without intermediate stages. On the screen we can now see the different sound zones which are later added to the different hi-hat sounds. Now we know that there are different degrees of opening. We need to feed the individual zones with samples that have different opening stages. To select the levels we simply can use the corresponding drop-down menu. At first we assign the samples for the closed zones and then switch to the open zone. We now see that the bars are empty again and can be filled with the corresponding wave files. This process needs to be repeated for each zone and for each degree of opening. It goes without saying that the more open levels we use, the more realistic the final result. To save our now ready sounds, 
Just click on File, Save Sound or Save Sound As. We now have created our own DSND file that we can now assign accordingly within the kit editor. Now we have learned how we can create our own 2box sound from existing WAV files. Enjoy trying it on your own!